So this is the SM7B. It has a flat 50 hertz to 20K hertz frequency response and a switchable response for spoken words. It's an exceptional mic for adding body to thin vocals and handling loud rock and metal singers. It tames harsh or syllabin sounds from hi-hats, cymbals, and voice. And the SM7B is highly shielded against electrical interference and includes bass roll-off and mid-range emphasis controls with graphic display and an internal shock and air suspension shock isolation. So it comes with a standard windscreen, which is this low profile windscreen and also the A7WS detachable windscreen. So that one has a bigger, uh, a higher profile and that one's used for voiceovers or more uh, intricate uh, recording. So this is the microphone, the SM7D by Shure. Legendary performance. It's a cardioid dynamic mic. So we got the box open, right here it's sealed. Open the box, you got a limited warranty. It's usually for about a year. You should, should read it if uh, anything happens or, or don't get rid of it. Bumper sticker, and then the, a safety warning it's short the packaging is a lot but it's really just this part you need to read about safety hazards um, electrical getting water water in the capsule and fire so it's a safety precautions for that and then there's a user guide more information moving on this styrofoam, there's a hole here. You can lift this little slit out. It's made of styrofoam. When I unbox my mics, I usually look at the packaging. Uh, if you've watched my other videos. So lift the mic up. It's pretty heavy. You got that. You got this protective part for the microphone too. So hang on to that. Take the mic out. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. So this is the rest of the packaging. There's nothing else in this half. So it's styrofoam not terrible for an industry standard mic. It's uh, composed very well. And then here it looks like we have the windscreen. And then there is the windscreen. some 3M tape and an adapter. So. so when adjusting the shock mount to fit onto the microphone stand, you need to unscrew the left side forward and the right side backwards. You need to do the opposite motion. And I stress that you be very careful and do this part slowly. If you rush it, the screws and washers will fall off if you unscrew it all the way. You don't want that to happen because they've been strategically placed where they are. And if you, and if they fall out, you're gonna have to piece them back together. And that 
will, you know, that, that can compromise the, the shock isolation. So again, you want to do this simultaneously, but unscrew them separately. So then it fits perfectly for your, your positioning on the mic stand. Here in front of me, I have a cloud lifter. It's a CL1 mic activator. Got some cardboard. It's the iCloud. Here's the cloud lifter. And the, a strap. That's it, it's all cardboard. This piece runs you about $179 US. I like the electric blue color. This is the XLR. It's one input, a CL1. So the cloud lifter converts phantom power into as much as plus 25 dB of clean, clear gain for passive microphones such as the Shure SM7B. So it's extremely useful in boosting the signal of low output dynamic and ribbon mics. Again, just like the SM7B, which is a low output dynamic microphone. It helps with cutting down unwanted noise and coloration from mixers, interface and standalone mic preamp, and it keeps the signal from degrading over long cable runs on stage or even in the studio. So you can make this decision if you want to get a cloud lifter. So I'll show you the picture that comes in the manual so you can see the signal flow. So right here is where the mixer would go. Okay, so XLR to interface, mixer, console, and then from here is your microphone cord. So from here to your microphone. This is another picture of it too. Okay. So interface to cloud lifter to microphone to cloud lifter. Okay, so finally, I have the cloud lifter set up. I have it from my mic to the cloud lifter, cloud lifter to my audio box 22 VSL. So it did take a little time. Now on my setup, I have two cords, two XLR cords that are, I feel a little bit in my way. I could probably help it by getting smaller cables for my XLR. And I also need to find another place for this now. If it's worth it, I'm listening to the vocals. Let's, let's listen to it, see if we think it's worth it.
this mic was used to record Michael Jackson's vocals on Thriller, and it is a favorite of many well-renowned bands such as the Chili Peppers. So an application note is that the SM7B is a low output mic. You have to remember that this microphone is has a low output. So plugging it directly into an audio interface may not offer enough gain. In such a case, you will need a preamp with a decent amount of gain due to its smooth sound and thickening characteristics. A transparent sounding preamp would be the preferred choice.